Hi, welcome back to Sound and Voltage. I'm Jeff. If you've watched many of my videos, you've probably heard me say about modular that it's all voltage. And since that's the case, I'm always excited to find new ways to mix, mingle, mash, and modify those signals. Really, it's the core game mechanic of modular. Take a signal, do something to it, and route it somewhere else. So today I'm going to look at one such module from a new manufacturer, Strata, by Mid-Century Modular. Strata does something interesting, and I've been really enjoying playing with it. So my video is going to break down like this. First I'll describe the basic functioning of the module, then I'm going to give some examples of how to use it for specific purposes, then how to fit it into an entire patch, I'll talk about what it was like to build as a DIY project, and then wrap up. I'll get to that in just a moment, but first I want to be 100% transparent. This video isn't sponsored by Mid-Century Modular, but they did contact me a couple months ago and asked if they could pay for me to make a video. That's not really what I do on this channel. Instead, I said I'd check out the module and make a video if I thought it was interesting. So they're not paying for this video, they didn't send me a completed unit, uh, but what they did do is send me the PCBs and front panel for free. I built it myself with my own parts as sort of a beta builder for them. In the end, I don't really count that as paid advertisement since I put in a lot more of my own time and money. But uh, if I didn't like Strata, I wouldn't be making this video. But I did like Strata, and I liked the company, so here's a video. And as a humorous aside, longtime subscribers might know that the original name of my channel was MCPM, and that stood for Mid-Century Postmodern. So, of course, I'm going to be interested in anything by Mid-Century Modular. And as an aside to that aside, another weird coincidence is with MCDM the channel and company associated with Matt Colville, who makes outstanding videos about tabletop RPGs. And that guy is also into modular. Neat. I had no idea until I randomly watched one of his videos where he popped up a picture of a maths. And then at the end, I saw MCDM as the logo, and it just blew my mind. Anyway, Mid-Century came out of stealth mode not long ago as of this video, with some great utility modules, including Strata. They also have a clock divider and a triple slew limiter, and I might talk about those sometime soon. They all look pretty good, and I really appreciate that they have really reasonable prices, especially for the DIY version. The PCB panel sets are just $20, that's hard to beat. Also I'm super impressed with the technical notes they provide with their modules. It goes through all the design thinking that went into creating the circuits, and for someone who's interested in understanding how these things really work, that's golden. So let's look at Strata and what it does. It's actually a bit hard to explain and I had to work to come up with the right word for it. And in the end, I went with sorting, but what does voltage sorting even mean? At first, I was going to say voltage mangling, but that wasn't accurate because the inputs aren't really modified. Instead, it accepts three input signals, looks at them all at the same time, and then takes the highest of the three voltages, the lowest of the three, and the one in the middle, and outputs them all separately. So in that sense, yeah, it's sorting the voltages, high, medium, low breaking up the signals not by time division or frequency, but just raw voltage level. I think the easiest way to understand it is just to draw it out. Strata takes three inputs, and that can be any sort of Eurorack signal, audio CV gates. Here I'm going to use a square, triangle, and sine wave, and I'm going to overlay them and just point out, a bit obviously maybe, that for the most part, one of those signals is always going to be the highest, higher than any of the others. One is going to be lower than any of the others, and the third is going to be in between. I'm going to pause here just to call that out. You can see that the square wave in yellow is above the other two, the triangle in green is below the other two, and the sine wave in blue is between them. If I let it run forward another few seconds, you can see that they've swapped around. Now the sine wave is highest, the square is lowest, and the triangle is in the middle. As the signal evolves, these signals are going to swap around. And that's really the core of strata. It looks at all three signals, and at each moment, it checks to see which is highest, lowest, and in the middle, and outputs them individually. So let's keep it running, except now I'm going to change up how the colors work. Now, rather than being colored by the input, I'm coloring the signal by what is high, low, and medium. The red is always at the top, the blue is always at the bottom, and the green is always in the middle. These are the actual strata, the layers that the name of the module references. Now let's break up those three again to show them independently. And this is what Strata is going to output. It's important to note that, except in some cases with multiple high voltages, Strata isn't actually changing the input signals. It's just routing them to different outputs based on their relative strength. That's why I chose the word sorting for what Strata does. It's not modifying the signals, it's just reorganizing them continuously into high, mid, and low. 
Now, there's something kind of neat that happens with this, too, and that gets into analog logic. I touched on this in my Maths 204 video, where, among other things, I explore the mysteries of the OR output. If you have a Maths, or love somebody who does, you should check that out. So let's look at the minimum output first. We're just going to have two inputs coming in for this, and for reasons that are going to become clear in a moment, let's just deal with voltage levels of 0 volts or 1 volt. If both inputs are just 0 volts, then the minimum of 0 volts and 0 volts is going to be just 0 volts. Similarly, the minimum of 0 volts and 1 volt, the minimum of 0. The only way to have an output greater than 0 is if both inputs are greater than 0. Now, if we just get rid of the volts part, we're left with the classic truth table for an AND gate. It's true only if A and B are true. Everything else is false. So let's look at the maximum output now and run through the same options. If the two inputs are both 0 volts, well, then the maximum of 0 and 0 is going to be 0. But if we have one input that's 0 and another which is 1 volt, the maximum of 0 and 1 is going to be 1 volt. And of course, if both inputs are 1 volt, then the max is going to be 1 volt. So again, let's get rid of volts from the chart, and we're left with the truth table for OR. The output is true if A or B is true. So that's a different way of thinking about what Strata does. It gives us analog versions of the AND and OR gates. And with those, we can do something fun with binary on-off signals, like gates. I have PAM set up here, just dialed into some random divisions, and I'll bring them into the mix one at a time. You can see I've got the two Mordax datas here. The one on the left is going to show the original signals, the gates coming in. The one on the right is going to show them after they go through Strata. So when you just have a single gate going in, Strata is just going to duplicate that on the max output. After all, when it goes high, that is going to be the maximum of anything coming in, so that's what it outputs. Things get more interesting when you add a second clock. And then I'm going to add a third that only fires a portion of the time. You can see that the result of these three fairly regular pulses coming in is turning into some irregular pulses on the other side. One thing that I didn't talk about is that the inputs are normal, one to each of plus 5, 0, and minus 5 volts. And that comes in handy for the next unexpected use for Strata, and that's doing half-wave rectification. Rectification is what you're seeing here. We started with a regular sine wave that went back and forth through the zero point, but now we're cutting off anything that was below zero, so we get this sort of half sine with gaps between them. What's happening is that that middle input is normal to zero volts. So now, when the sine wave is above zero, that's the maximum value, so that's what gets output. But once the sine wave goes negative, now zero is the largest value, and that's what gets output. So here's an interesting question. What do you think is coming out of the middle output? If you guessed it was going to be the other half of the sine wave, congratulations. I think people may have imagined that that would come out of the minimum output, except the mid output is normal to zero volts, and the minimum output is normal to minus five volts. Anything higher than zero volts is going to come out of the max, and since we never output anything less than minus five, that minimum is going to stay at minus 5. And that means the mid output is going to output anything less than 0, but above minus 5 volts. And here it is. But bringing in a little bit of outside kit, we can take it a step further. Take any module that's going to function as an attenuverter, and let's invert that negative signal coming out of the mid output and run it back into strata again. Now we've effectively taken the absolute value of the waveform coming in, with all of the negatives turned back into positives. This is cool for a few reasons. Back when I was getting into modular, I picked up a 4MS VCA matrix, which I thought would pair nicely with triple sloths as a way to slowly have ambient sounds mix and mingle over time. What I discovered, though, was that things would just go silent a lot of the time, and that's because the sloth output had gone negative, and a negative voltage doesn't really mean anything to a VCA. In effect, I was halfway rectifying the output of the sloth, and everything negative was just treated as zero. 
What I really needed to do was full wave rectify the sloth outputs to keep them all positive at all times. So using it with CV, that's one use, but we can also have some cool effects on an audio rate waveform. One thing to notice is that we've doubled the number of peaks in the wave. And doubling the number of peaks means doubling the number of cycles, and doubling the number of cycles means that you raise the pitch by an octave. And you can see that here using the tuner. And switching over to the spectrum display, you can see how the peak frequency is doubled. And that's what we'd expect, but also notice how we have these harmonics at the original frequency below and above by a couple octaves as well. That's because it's no longer a pure sine wave. And that's something I think is really cool about this, that we can take the simplest waveform and turn it into something more rich with what is, mathematically at least, a simple transformation. This might make for an interesting use for a matrix mixer. If we took the original sine wave and the double frequency version and the half wave rectified version and mixed them all subtly differently for different outputs and had them drift in and out of each other, I'll have to try that. Another thing to mention quickly is its use as a distortion effect. If you just run a couple of audio rate signals into it, it's no surprise that they're going to interfere with each other, and that can produce some really nice crunchiness. So those are some specific use cases for Strata. But where I think modules like this really come into their own is when you have them doing multiple things at different places in the patch. This one here is kind of fun. As inputs, I'm taking a couple of LFOs from the depth for quad LFO. It generates bipolar LFOs, so each cycle only spends part of the time above zero. Strata does its thing, and then we take two outputs from it and route it to two different places each. Each output is going to control a burst generator running on the maths, and that's going to be routed to a couple of samples on the bit box. The burst generator just takes the output as an on and off, but the FM inputs use the full range of the bursts, so it doesn't necessarily feel like there's a direct correspondence between them. And of course, we've got some great delay happening on the outside here. And this is a different example, and it demonstrates what I think is a good use for different layers of the strata output. The inputs under the strata are two of the bipolar outputs from the Depfer again, and a unipolar output from the maths. And I've got two VCOs here, and I've got them tuned together to start. The first is the 4MS Ensemble Oscillator, which is going to retain a fixed root pitch, and it's going to open up in fifths and octaves, and that's going to play nicely with the scale that I have set up on the quantizer. The other VCO is the Depfer Mini Synth Voice, and I have the output of the quantizer going into the pitch input on that. So Strata is controlling the pitch of that bass on the depth for mini voice, as well as the oscillator spread and FM parameters on the ensemble oscillator. Maths is acting as a clock for the bass, as well as to occasionally play a little sample on the bit box, because why not? Okay, so that's the basic operation of Strata. And I really wanted to talk just a little bit about the experience of building it, since I've been touching on DIY topics lately. I really quite enjoyed it. The boards are nicely laid out, the parts are really standard and easy to obtain. I think it took about four hours to build, but that included time for me to record the process and everything. It would have gone faster. Certainly I think it's doable in an afternoon even for a relatively novice builder. And I also want to call out again just the transparency that Mid-Century has with its design. I've really learned quite a bit about reading through his design thoughts, and if you were wanting to start your own circuits, you could do much, much worse than to study what he's done. Really, there was only one small problem in building it, and that's that the LEDs that I used needed a different uh, value of resistor. 
so there was a bit of desoldering and resoldering to be done, but that's hardly their fault. In terms of design, I think the only issue that I would raise is that putting it all into 4 HP made the PCBs a bit cramped and took away some of the room for additional standoffs that would have made the uh, boards and faceplate a little bit more rigid. Also, I would have preferred to have seen this in 6 HP with a bit of room to move and stabilizing things would be nice. Maybe also add attenuverters to the outputs. Uh, that would have opened up some nice self-patching opportunities and would have saved me using external attenuverting basically all the time. But you know, that's just totally me. 6 HP versus 4 HP is fine, because I've got like 2000 HP in, in rack space. But if I was trying to keep myself to a small footprint, that 4 HP is awesome. So, net net, I think that if you're the sort of modular user who likes taking predictable waveforms and making less predictable ones out of them, then Strata is the sort of module you're really going to enjoy. It's a great little voltage discovery machine. It's well priced, it's easy to use. This isn't really intended as a review, but if it was intended as a review, I think it's great. So that's it, the Strata video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. Personally, I really enjoy discovering new ways to warp and twist my signals into new shapes to enjoy. If you made it this far, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. It makes a big difference over time. And you know, I'm getting closer to 10,000 subscribers, which just knocks me out. And I think as we get closer to that, I'm going to start planning for a big giveaway to celebrate it. So make sure that you subscribe so you can get in on that. Anyways, thanks for watching.